Apex Online Racing is sponsored by Elgato, who created this lovely stream deck. For more information about the stream deck, the link is in the description below. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Apex Online Racing YouTube channel where today we have the final round of Season 16 of the AOR Project Cars 2 GT3 League. We are at Fuji Speedway, a fantastic venue for this final race. It is a championship decider, we should get onto that in just a second. But my name is Yorkie065, welcome along everybody to the stream. And joining me in the commentary box once again is Mashup Matt. Matt, how are you doing buddy? Good evening, Yorkie. Good evening, everybody. I'm very well, thank you. I'm very much looking forward to this championship showdown we have at the end of this Apex Online Racing GT3 Championship. And it is be it has been one of the most tantalizing seasons ever on Project Cars 2. There's only nine points separating the top two in the championship. The season which started all the way back in August comes to its conclusion here at Fuji, who will come out with the Drivers' Championship today. Yep, so you can see up on screen there, the Drivers' Championship, and just like Matt said, just nine points separating Dynamite Alive from Strongest Avenger there at the top of the leaderboard. Moo is a little bit further out of contention. He's not completely out of it. He's 44.5 points off the... Well, actually, no. Uh, yeah, he is completely out of it. He's 53 points off the top spot, but he could pip Strongest Avenger if Strongest Avenger came away with no points and Moo came away with... The race win, for example. Yogurk's unfortunately out of contention there, but he's only 22 points behind Moo, so he could potentially reclaim that third position. And as you look down throughout the leaderboard, you also see a number of other drivers down there as well who are all battling for various different positions. And there is the second half of the leaderboard as well, and there's some more battles going on. So there is throughout the grid championship positions yet still to be settled coming here into this final round just like Matt said we also started back in August the 12th of August there is the Canada you can see on the screen so we started at Daytona we hopped over the uh, over the Pacific to Bathurst then went back to America again for Circuit of the Americas Long Beach we then hopped over the pond back over to Europe for Red Bull Ring Zolder Silverstone GP Spa Francorchamps and then we continued further east and come over to Japan to finish up the last two rounds at Sportsland Sugo and Fuji where we are tonight where it's just the usual standard race format a 15 minute qualifying session which we are about two and a half minutes into at the moment and then we have a 60 minute race and there is one of the, the uh, title contenders strongest Avenger in his Aston Martin and his main rival Dynamite Alive in the Lamborghini also out on well he's actually in the pit lane he's just about to jump back out onto the circuit in just a moment but Matt you were present for the practice slash shows race last night tell us what info and details you have hidden up your sleeve that you gathered last night well basically it's going to be a straight fight if anything uh, if last night is anything to go by strongest avenger and dynamite alive were the class of the field you need to have a look as well at high times who picked up a podium back in spa francorchamps of course he's won the watch as well he was running very close to the front but it is set up perfectly for a battle between the top two in the championship between the aston martin strongest avenger and the lamborghini of dynamite alive as we see strongest avenger coming towards the line for his first flying lap as Yoga goes fastest on a 37 flat in the Janetta. Let's see what the Aston Martin can do straight out of the traps. And he goes straight to the top at 36.3. And that's pretty much the pace they were setting last night. So it's going to be a close one. And don't forget, with the extra point for pole position as well, it could be a crucial one when it comes to the final reckoning. Yeah, definitely. As we have we mentioned, only nine points separating the two. If he can get that pole position strongest, then he'll just need to get eight points clear of uh, Dynamite Alive in the race. And if he wins the race, then Dynamite Alive will need to finish in third position or worse. If uh, Dynamite Alive was to get second, there is only six points difference between the... Uh, P1 and P2 and uh, Dynamite would hold on to the uh, the championship and uh, take that crown coming into this final race here. Interestingly you got Andrex uh, shown up 
here driving around the uh, the track at the moment. He was last season's champion. He's uh, not been able to defend that title here this season as he's down in eighth place in the championship with uh, two did not starts and a disconnect uh, last time out. But he's in a pretty competitive car around uh, around this track, I would have thought. How did uh, Alan and Andrex fare last night? Well, Alan was very much on the pace. He was up there in the top four and even hassling the top two at one point. So, yes, keep an eye out for those uh, Mercedes as we look to Dynamite Alive. But Alan certainly has the pace on his teammate. But Andrex, no slouch around here. A lot of the drivers were struggling yesterday, particularly with uh, setting up their tyre pressures and uh, keeping their temperatures under control. So if, if anything has been brought out of last night, I would imagine that a lot of the drivers would be making a lot of last minute setup changes as we actually see Dynamite Alive's teammate Lumi there just off on the grass ahead of his teammates, going to stay out of his way. So it's not going to be a straightforward fight for the two championship contenders. And I believe, uh, well, really, if we get any of the, uh, the Mercedes, even the Ferrari of high times into the mix as well, that could really spice up the championship fight as well, especially if the two leading contenders are going to be separated by a few cars. Yeah, and obviously Dynamite Alive has got his teammate Lumi as well, uh, who he could potentially fall back on. Lumi at the moment is uh, it's about four tenths off strongest Avengers time, so there's a possibility there of being able to improve, although Dynamite Alive has gone and popped himself up into a provisional P3 now. It's currently this man out on track, Mu, who's uh, currently got that pole position time, making it a little bit more difficult for our two championship contenders. Uh, obviously, Move is looking to try and consolidate on that third position. But it's interesting that you mentioned drivers struggling with the, uh, the tyre pressures around the circuit. Obviously, it uh, can be a little bit of a difficult one in, in some senses. A lot of corners for the majority of the circuit in the first, I'd say, probably, well, after the start finish straight, which is extremely long. Obviously, that gives a chance for the tyres to cool down. But once you come off of that, you're pretty much near enough flowing from one corner to another and the tyres are always pretty much under load so uh, obviously they'll struggle with uh, tyre pressures a little bit through that sense and then obviously them cooling down on the uh, the start finish straight or potentially the other way round if they've uh, tried to close the brake ducts to maximise that straight line speed and then when it comes to all the braking zones and everything else like that through the uh, through this cornery section here which Ash Turbo is currently in at the moment then um, yeah temperature running through the brakes could uh, heat those pressures up a little bit more so be interesting to see if uh, anyone has fixed their issues from last night yeah seemed to be a lot of sliding around on the on the track last night a lot of uh, a lot of drifting going on particularly from what I was hearing from a lot of drivers in the chat anyway so we're just going to keep an eye here on As Turbo, who's in ninth place. He's had, a, he's had a fairly decent season as well. One of the standouts in that McLaren, wouldn't you say so? Yeah, he's been very good. He's, uh, I know he's McLaren's not his usual car choice, but he's gone and picked it because he's uh, driving in the Logitech G Challenge uh, eSports series that's running on Project Cars 2 at the moment, or has been very recently. Uh, so he's, he's kind of been using the car for practice, and it's been a bit of a... Uh, the season of two halves, the first half of the season outside the top 10 quite consistently he was knocking on the door for about three rounds in a row with, uh, well, three 11th positions and a 12th. And then he managed to get himself a, uh, a podium with a P2 uh, back in Austria, that looks like. And then uh, in Zoldo, he managed to get a third position in the, uh, the second feature race. Since then, he's had a few struggles, but yeah, it's been a bit up and down for him in that McLaren but uh, hopefully he's, he's been getting to grips with it yeah I would say so those uh, <clears throat> excuse me those two performances particularly at the Red Bull ring were particularly impressive and he's currently inside the top 10 we've got a couple of drivers already with uh, grid penalties I think Nidalap and Fubar have got uh, a one grid place penalty so far so we're just going to jump back now to the championship contenders and to Dynamite Alive, who's three tenths now our strongest Avenger, who's just nicked the provisional pole from Mu. And we'll stick with Dynamite Alive and we'll take you on a lap of this Fuji Raceway, which is a very unique track, shall we put it? 
yeah, it's one that I do uh, quite enjoy. It's quite good for uh, overtaking. So we're just coming into the final turn now. It's a bit of a late apex that creeps up on you. You want to try and maximise the exit as much as possible because we are now onto, well, we were onto a extremely long start finish straight. So we'll pick up Strongest Avenger, who's I think is uh, about to start a flying lap fairly soon uh, with five minutes remaining. He's just coming through the penultimate turn now. So now we're coming into the very long right hand of the final corner, just doing the last little bit of uh, of tyre warming. So here he comes, round out onto the start finish straight. So obviously you want the best run you could possibly get off of that final corner here. And then you just accelerate. You got a lot of time to position yourself ready for turn one. Obviously this is going to be slipstream heaven, and it's going to be working very very nicely into the. SLS and Aston Martin's hands breaking about 130 meters before the corner all the way down into first gear for the tight right handed hairpin. We then come into turn two which is this little kink here completely flat out doesn't trouble the cars whatsoever. We then approach turn three using the curb on the right hand side flinging the car in trying to maximize the speed through the turn and we're 600s off at the moment as we come into the very long double right hand of turns four and five keep the car to the right hand side ready for turn six try and open that one up you can carry a fair bit more speed into that corner then you think the camber and the dip helps you a little bit and the track kind of opens up and the corner unwinds out a little bit which kind of helps you on the exit if you run a little bit deep there just gone through the double right hander of eight and nine we're now into the Dunlop chicane of turns 10 Flick it left for 11. Hammer the curb coming through turn 12. Bring the car left ready for turn 13. Turning the car in. Apexing just round about the uh, the spot of that bollard. We then come into 14 and 15. 15 is quite a late apex so you kind of sacrifice 14. An awful lot. And then we come into the final turn once again. And as I was saying it's all about hooking up that late apex. Trying to straight line the exit. A nice smooth run there by Strongest Avenger. So now it's just a case of him nailing all the gear shifts as he's coming up towards the start finish line. A 136.126 is his current lap time. Five hundredths ahead of Moo. Does he improve on his lap time as he crosses the line? Indeed he does with a 35.9 going two tenths clear of P2. He'll be very happy with that. And as you can see, he's jumped back to the pits as Dynamite Alive, I think, has just started a flying lap. Yes, he has. He's got half a second to make up then on Strongest Avenger. Let's see what he can do on his flying lap. He's got absolutely no one ahead of him. So a nice clear track then for the Lamborghini as he flings it through the left-hander. Oh, gets very out of shape through off the curb on the outside. And he did abandon his lap, which was a shame because he was slightly up there on his split time. So a little bit of a shame, but he's still got another two minutes or so to get another lap in. Yeah, that's just about enough time he'll be able to get out on circuit and back round, providing he doesn't have to sacrifice too much track space for uh, any of the traffic. See Jogok here in the Janetta in P6. At the moment, he's uh, looking to try and pinch P3 in the championship off of Moo. It's going to be quite a tall task in that Janetta, though. Obviously, it'll be good very, through the corners, like we've been saying all season long, but it's really going to suffer down that uh, that long start-finish straight. And I, well from what I gathered from the uh, the chit chat on Discord over the last 24 hours or so that car just it's no match well yeah it, it can't match anything else it just the uh, it really really suffers and it basically maxes out in straight line speed quite early and everything just continues to pour and slips on past yeah it, it unfortunately the the final race of the season not going to be a strong one for the Genetas but Jogok was fairly happy with uh, what he was doing last night. I think he knows that uh, the gig is up, especially when it comes to winning this race. But of course, it's all about getting to the checkered flag. And uh, Jogic has put in some very consistent performances over this season. Of course, won a race at Zolder as well. So he knows what it's like to win in that car. And he won't be giving up because, of course, there have been plenty of incidents so far this year. And of course, that final race tension as well may work in his favor because he's basically got nothing to lose at this point. Yeah, definitely. We're pushing hard, and I also noticed it's 266 kilometers an hour he got to on the uh, the start finish straight. Where is Dynamite Live? Exactly on track. Here he comes over to begin a lap with uh, just under 30 seconds remaining. So 
This is going to be his one last effort to uh, try and improve on his time and jump up from fourth position. At the moment, it's Allen that's in front of him. Oh, I just missed the uh, the speed there that he topped out at the top. Just trying to look for the difference between the Ginetta and the other cars, but turn one looked relatively neat and tidy. Let's see how he comes through turn three, the Coca-Cola corner. A bit more aggressively than Strongest Avenger was using the outside curb a tenth up there, but the uh, the bounce on the exit may have just cost him a little bit. A nice tight line coming through 100R, which is turns four and five, brings the car back over to the right a little bit for hairpin. He probably could have been a little bit more committed going into there. I think this lap is looking a little bit more rough and ragged than uh, what Strongest Avenger did. Strongest lap looked uh, very calm and smooth, but looks can be deceptive into the chicane I haven't seen the next sector split which I think is coming up through this turn here oh, he's nine hundreds of a second down off his previous fastest if he can improve by a tenth and a half he'll pop himself back up into third place but he needs to improve by three tenths in order to jump up into P2 and obviously five and a half tenths to uh, take pole position so it's all down to the last sector here Looked like a fairly strong run coming off the uh, the final turn hanging the rear end out a little bit strongest Avenger hasn't improved on his lap time so it's now all eyes on dynamite alive as he comes to the start finish line where is he gonna be for this final race of the season p4 does not improve well he's got his work cut out now then doesn't he so it looks like strongest Avenger is gonna take that, that added point for pole position, which will now put him eight points behind Dynamite Alive. So the championship leader's got a little bit of work to do in this race so far, but uh, props to this man as well. Looks like he's going to get himself a front row slot. There's no one really out there. It's only him and Fubar out on track, and Fubar's coming back into the pit lane. So it looks as if we have our grid set up for the final race, and it looks like Strongest Avenger has taken pole. Indeed it does. So here is your confirmation then of the final qualifying session of the season. Strongest Avenger taking pole position with a 135.949, the only man in the 35s. Moo comes up in second with Allen starting in P3. Dynamite Alive just ahead of his teammate Lumi in fourth and fifth position respectively. Yogak comes up in sixth. High times having a fairly good qualifying session there. In P7, Boge France in 8th position with Fubar 9th, and then As Turbo will round out your top 10. Andrex in the Mercedes takes 11th place ahead of Trip in the Lamborghini. WMDR Martin and Speedy Go in 13th and 14th. That there in 15th is Stefan Carey, who likes to change his username every race just to confuse everybody. The Kinky One in 16th ahead of Luke and Cameron. Kirinik 19th ahead of Nidalap, Gwegwin in the Bentley 21st, and Cinderfell rounds out the grid. So, who's your money on, Yorkie? Oh, it's, it's going to be tight. Obviously, Strongest Avenger in a very good spot. He's in the pound seat, starting there from pole position. He's now got that points difference down to eight points. Obviously, if he picks up the fastest lap of the race, he's going to get an extra bonus point there as well. Uh, but... Oh, it's going to be difficult. I, it's very possible that Dynamite Alive can still get second position, even if Strongest Avenger comes away with the win. Um, I don't think Alan will want to get too involved with the championship battle. Um, I can see Mu being a bit more resistant and not giving up that second position quite so easily. Um, but I think Mu is probably more interested in trying to consolidate on uh, on third place than pick up the results but who knows he might he may go for the move uh down into the first corner and try and take the race lead straight from the off yeah i gotta say i think my money is just swinging towards strongest avenger as you say with moo sitting there he has to keep uh, yoga at bay of course yoga starting in sixth place and doesn't seem to be a threat for victory but as you say he will not want he'll want to show that he really could still have been in this championship fight, given that he missed a couple of races this season as well. 
So, but I would still, at this moment, just back Strongest Avenger at the moment. But of course, as we've seen a lot of this season, if that Aston Martin gets bogged down behind other cars, it can be a difficult beast to tame. So it's all about the start, really. If he can get a clear run, then I would seriously consider that Aston Martin as basically going to pick up the championship for him. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's going to be a real tough one to call because obviously Strongest Avenger's got He's in the pound seat. He's starting there from pole. He he can control the start. The next best position from that is actually third place because they can see first position and react a lot better than second place can. And usually third position hops P2 going into the first corner. But Alan is a very fair and respectable driver. And as I said, he probably doesn't want to get involved in this championship battle. So I can't really see him, if he gets presented with an opportunity making the move on Strongest Avenger unless the door is wide open and Strongest is effectively gifting the position to him through a, through a mistake. So I I think I can see Alan letting Dynamite Alive go up into third place fairly early on. It's just then a question as to how Moo is going to react uh, from the race start and just generally, yeah, how he's going to play his race in relation to the two people around him. Yeah, we're in the realms of the unknown now, especially with the rolling starts as well. And it is a very long run down to turn one. So as you say, there'll be plenty of moves throughout the field. But let's don't forget there are plenty of other drivers in this race as well. And especially those ones just sitting in behind these two Lamborghinis as well. They won't mind getting their elbows out down to the first corner. It's all about keeping it clean at the start for the championship contenders. Yeah. Definitely. You're going to have your work cut out for you trying to keep an eye out on, obviously, this this battle here at the, the top of the championship. All those oh, battles throughout the, uh, throughout the rest of the field as well. But the guys are crawling into the Dunlop chicane now towards the end of the lap. It's actually down at turn 14, 15, next corner, which is where the uh, the formation point is. And it, as you say, it is a very long run, or crawl, shall I say to the start finish line so it's at this point here that they should be forming up in the 2x2 two two formation they might opt to do it a little bit later on uh, some of the other drivers because just because they've got so much space and time obviously they've reduced their speed now down to 80 kilometers an hour and 50 miles an hour uh, just to allow everyone to form nicely up but you can see the two trains forming there so everyone is behaving there is a little bit of space towards the tail end of the field but everyone's coming in now you can see there Alan leaving a fairly big gap to uh, strongest Avenger as they crawl towards the start finish line obviously pole position is gonna have the inside line coming into that first turn so all eyes at the head of the field you can see Lumi sat there well he's currently in fourth position in fact he's ahead of his teammate he's so close to the back of Alan but it's any time between now and the start finish line that we can go racing for the final time of the season and we have done so strongest avenger putting his foot down it looked like that dynamite alive got a relatively good launch off the line and he's trying to threat moo already coming into the first turn he's being forced to the outside though although moo's gonna make contact with strongest avenger he's gone round he's gonna be dropping to the back of the field surely that's absolutely devastating for strongest race what on earth happened there with Mu just completely looked like he outbraked himself and took out one of the title contenders. Oh my god! Drama wow. straight from the off! Wow, what a start. Well, Mu, I think, was looking so much as we got another couple of cars off. That's Luke and Cameron getting caught up as well in the background. But I think what happened was Dynamite Alive trying to go around the outside of. Uh, of Mu, Mu pretty much missed his breaking point and ploughed straight into the back of Strongest Avenger. Now, that's got surely going to cause damage to Strongest Aston Martin as well. Well, if he can somehow recover now, it's going to be one miracle of a drive. But what a gift, really, for Dynamite Alive. He leads the race already and Yogurk is up into second place. Well, we wanted drama and we've got it already. My, oh my, oh my, I do apologise for everyone's ears there with the uh, with that first corner. I may have deafened a few people uh, with that strongest Avenger up into 16th place. The big question is, how much damage does he actually have to the rear of the car, if any? As obviously that's going to affect him working his way through the field. Um, I guess one of the things that will work in his favour 
is that people will actually know that uh, he's he's obviously t he's fighting for the championship, so probably won't put up too much of a fight. He's got a double slipstream here off the back of the Bentley of uh, Gregwin and also one of the Audi R8, but as he pulls out of the slipstream there, Bentley starts to uh, pull back a little bit. That was one of the drivers diving into the pit lane fairly early on, but Strongest is down the inside of Gregwin. He's also going down the inside of the kinky one and makes up two positions. Coming through turn one, nearly, surely. Kinky one's there alongside at the moment, but no doubt he'll settle in behind coming into turn three. So Strongest up into P14. Dynamite alive, still in the race lead. Oh, high times there in the pit lane. Looks like he's potentially got some damage as well to his car. So, wow. Seems like a few people may have been uh, involved in incidents at turn one. Yeah, that's a shame because uh, high times have qualified pretty well, was showing some good pace. And tell you what, who's showing some strong pace is Yogic right in the middle of that Lamborghini sandwich up the front. And of course, with Moo dropping down as well, that's going to help him out in his battle for third place in the championship. Uh, he really wants to get in on the act here. Yeah, he's 22 points off the back of uh, Moo at the moment. And as things stand, I think he will take that position. Or he's on course to, but obviously Moo's down in 13th. Uh, is Moo down in 13th? What's happened to Strongest? Where's Strongest Avenger? Strongest he's is now down, down in 19th. 19th. So he's, he must have had a spin somewhere along the line and has, uh, has dropped further back down through the field. Yeah, I don't know what's going what's going on there. He's now back behind this whole pack. Where was he? He was somewhere near the kinky one, wasn't he? Yeah, he and was kinky 14th. Ones up into 11th. So I'm wondering if there's been a few more. Perhaps he got caught up in someone else's incident. I'm not entirely sure as there's a couple more cars into the pit lane as well. So it's been a very eventful start for the Aston Martins. He's going to go three wide down into turn one. Sindafel and Nidalap and Gwegwin as well. Is he going to take all three of them in one fell swoop? He doesn't <laughs> want more contact. As the Oh, and that looks like Nidalap just ta tagging the back of the Aston Martin. But he just about survives. Well, I'm, I'm speechless. What an action-packed start to this race. The strongest Avenger. Well, I, this is going to be one hell of a drive if he managed to get anywhere near the top three. Yeah, that was very much squeaky bum time there for him. I could see, well, he, he, can't, he had to go for the move, really. He, he needed to try and take those three corners and dispatch them as quickly as possible to try and get back on pace. Um, I think Greg, uh, not Greg Wynn, sorry, uh, Nidalat was just trying to battle some of the other drivers and in doing so just tagged Strongest Avenger as he's going through the corner. There is Trip in... in uh, where is Trip? He's Trip's eight in eighth position. Moment. Yep. Uh, just lost my bearing slightly there. So uh, As Turbo is on the back of Speedy Go. Moo is in twelfth position. So just ahead of Strongest Avenger, about two, uh, no, one and a half seconds between the two at the moment. Um, I, well, yeah, I'm actually surprised you're still on the back of uh, Dynamite Alive as they start uh, lap. Four? No, starting now lap five. Just, well, less than four tenths of a second between the two. Oh, oh my God. Wow, I don't think uh, Mass Turbo was ready for Speedy Go to come into the pit lane as Moon now has a go at the kinky one. Down at the front straight, the power of that Lamborghini will surely get him ahead into turn one. And the Audi not putting up too much resistance and Strongest Avenger just behind as well. Another kinky one doesn't want to be too involved in this and I think Strongest Avenger is going to be pretty much past him fairly quickly. Uh, what is he? Some 16 seconds off the lead. That's still going to be a lot of time to make up obviously but he's going to have to ring every ounce of performance out of Aston Martin. And I did say, we did say earlier that when it gets stuck behind cars it can be a difficult car to maintain. Uh, I think when he gets past uh, the kinky one with all respect to him now he's up to the drivers that are going to be very hard to overtake. Yeah, but also, that, well, they'll be thinking of the championship and not really wanting to have a play in uh, preventing Strongest Avenger from uh, getting the opportunity to race. You can see the Strongest outbreaking himself there, coming into the uh, chicane, just following the other drivers. All oh, Yogurt's been off the road and has uh, dropped now behind Lumi. So he's back down into third position. He's now lost that slipstream that he had off of uh, Dynamite Alive on the previous lap. And it's going to have Alan for company. Now, this is going to be an interesting watch. It's just seeing the difference between the two cars. Obviously, 
Alan's got the uh, the added benefit of the slipstream, but the SLS is so much quicker in a straight line as well. The uh, SLS should... Uh, actually, no. <laughs> I was going to say, the SLS should breeze past Yogurt. Well, it is going to now as Yogurt goes and now breaks himself into that first corner. But I was going to say, it seems like Yogurt's going to have found some uh, top-end speed. Yeah, as you said, he'd been benefiting from the slipstream as well. But two mistakes have dropped in now down into fourth place. Uh, both France and Fuba having a good scrap behind them as well between the Mercedes and the Renault. That's a shame, really, that Jorgic's dropped out of that second place because now we've got a formation fly-in of teammates at the front. I guarantee that Lumi will not be wanting to challenge his teammate at this stage. No, definitely not. He's going to be acting as a rear gunner, I would have thought, for anyone coming up behind. But, uh, yeah, Fubar up into fifth position. I think he started in P8, didn't he? Yes, he did. He has made up a few positions. And so's Bosch France. I think he started in either eighth or tenth place as well. So those two have uh, benefited from the chaos at the start of this race. We've got Trip and Andrex very close in the background as well. So there's still plenty of uh, fighting going on. The strongest Avenger and Moore are now eleventh well, and tenth respectively. Moo just ahead, but they're not making up any ground at the moment. They're in the 38s. They are catching Ass Turbo. Uh, in front of them. There's going to be one hell of a recovery from the pair of them. As we see now, let's see if Trip can get a run on Andrex down the front straight. But as you pointed out, that Mercedes is incredibly fast in a straight line. Yep, it certainly is. The uh, Lamborghini will fare a little bit better in comparison to the Ginetta against the, uh, the Mercedes. But as you can see, it's not really making any ground in the slipstream there. Despite the uh, the length of that straight, obviously under braking, you kind of get the uh, accordion effect there. The cars come closer together, but then as they accelerate out of the corner, the gap stretches back out again visibly. Probably doesn't actually change much in terms of uh, actual time difference between the two. That's both of them nicely respecting the, uh, the track limits there. And there is Alan. He's fairly close to the back of uh, Lumi. May want to potentially pop himself... In front, it's a 50 points difference between uh, Lumi and Alan. Battle for fifth position in the championship. So, unless Alan wins the race and Lumi doesn't finish at all, uh, or finishes outside of the top 20, I don't think Alan's going to be uh, finishing any better than sixth, sixth position. No, but they can still give us a fairly decent on track battle now as they come towards the final few corners. It'll be interesting now to see with the slipstream how close this Mercedes gets to the Lamborghini. Uh, Lumi will have a slight toe from his teammate in front, but looking at the timings, Lumi's picked up a time penalty already, a six-second oh. time penalty already. So Lumi's got his hands tied already at the early stages of this race. Let's see how close Alan can get. He's gaining very, very slowly on the Lamborghini. This is going to be a battle on the brakes into turn one. Is he going to be brave enough to have a go? Not quite. He just slots in behind as Yogurt has come into the pit lane. Yep, I also saw uh, a few cars battling away. Bosch France and Fubar down the uh, the start finish straight as well. And it looks, look, well, for, blimey, that was a very quick stop there by Yogurt. Less than a second or there, thereabouts. I know his teammates been into the uh, into the pit lane. There is the battle between Fubar and Bosch France. And in fact, Andrex has joined into this one as well as a three-way fight and then there just in the background is trip so he's about half a second off the back of these three so a very close fight there but uh, what i was going to say was that speedy goat being into the pit lane noticed that he's got a 10 second penalty so that would have been for speeding into the pit lane probably coming into the entry with uh ash turbo right up his gearbox and that scare that we saw earlier on but this is interesting the uh old mercedes versus new mercedes versus a what's normal not normally a gt3 car, car that's been homologated down to a gt3 car in the terms of the the renault rso1 and then somewhere behind uh about half a second is trip lamborghini which is uh very much a gt3 car yeah both fans getting very close to the back then he just went in a little bit squirrely on the throttle andrex now if he keeps a wide line will surely have a much better run out of the final corner. He is tucked up right underneath the other Mercedes now having to go side by side down the start finish straight and has got that high 
top speed advantage as well keeping well to the right hand side nearly up against the pit wall let's see they're still side by side as they head towards the first corner sweeps back in just to remind Bose Franz that he's still there and in fact Bose Franz has edged back ahead well that's a little bit of a surprise but let's see if we have a run down to turn three whether he can get the job done on the inside or the outside this is helping Fubar just maintain his position at the head of this train and we remain as we were but these four in a very decent scrap yeah Andrex had the much better run off the corner as we saw eked ahead but uh, I think Bose France was still in the uh, the slipstream of Fubar in front which allowed him to pull back up and uh, creep up level once again before uh, taking the position there going into that first turn and now Andrex is very much under threat from trip as we can see it's a fairly uh, equal distant gap between Bose France and Fuba. As Andrex up brakes himself slightly coming into the first turn. Had to just hold the brakes going through the apex there. Which uh, may have held up trip a little bit. A few differing lines coming through. Uh, turns 12 and 13 there. But things uh, settle in once again. I can see Mu and Strongest Avenger are now in ninth and 10th position respectively. Continuing their hunt on at the moment. On, well, on the previous lap, Strongest Avenger. Fastest man on circuit with 37 point which is four tenths quicker than what Dynamite Alive has done and half a second quicker than uh, than Mu. This could be a better opportunity for Andrex though. Actually in the slipstream this time round has got a bit of room to play with as well as Trip is into the pit lane. And in fact it's got a double slipstream here as Bose France is getting the, the toe off of uh, Fuba. Andrex on the inside half boxing Bose France in but Bose tries to hold it around the outside through that first corner. The two of them giving each other racing room but Andrex has managed to nose ahead for the moment and it looks like he's just about managed to take that position and is now up in P5 but Bose France is right there underneath the rear wing still. Very clever that from Andrex, just boxed Bose France in behind Fubar there. He did not allow him to pull out of the slipstream of the Renault. Bose France had to lift off very slightly and that gave Andrex the run he needed to into turn one and then just held it through turn two all the way down to three. Although Bose France got a decent run out of the left hand and now as they plough down the hill towards the chicane, will Andrex go defensive to the inside or will he leave the door open? just about gets it stopped on the brakes Fuba and Andrex going in a little bit deep there but that chicane tightened so much that Bose France didn't really have anywhere to go and Andrex a very very sly and very clever move to move himself up into fifth place as a C behind strongest Avenger and Moon now are right on the back of Ass Turbo in front yeah, I imagine Mu is probably going to get Ass Turbo this time round coming down the start finish straight. Well, not. He's going to do it at the final corner instead and try and slot himself ahead. But it's going to gift Ass Turbo the slipstream coming down the start finish straight. Uh, Dynamite Live was 37.7 on the previous lap. The lap before that was the 138.1, the same times that Mu and Strongest Avenger were doing. That was 38.1 for. No, sorry, 38.7 for Mu that time round and Strongest Avenger again in the mid 37s. So another two attempts taken out of the race leader and he's now within half a second of the back of Ast Turbo. I imagine that Ast Turbo is not really going to uh, put up a fight there and allow Strongest Avenger to go through. So it'll be interesting just to see whether Mu will let Strongest Avenger go back through or whether he will fight that. Uh, that position for now is Bosch France trundling down pit lane, heading back out onto the circuit after a pit stop. Yeah, where's he's filtering back out? He's just come back out into 12th place, just ahead of Speedy Go. Is he going to be able to hold that position through turn one? Yes, he's got a fairly decent gap to the Ginetta behind. So Bosch France then making another early pit stop. Alan still crawling all over the back of Lumi, but Dynamite Alive has got now got a three second gap out front so it's looking good for Dynamite Alive in this championship fight so far but there's still an awful long way to go yet. Yeah notice that uh, Ast Turbo and Strongest Avenger have swapped positions so Strongest now up into P7 17 and a half seconds off the race leader as Dynamite Alive is going to be crossing the start finish line now Let's see what his uh, lap time is going to be another high 37 it's just intriguing watching these gaps seeing the difference 
between uh, Dynamite Live, Mu and Strongest Avenger. Mu will now be on the uh, standings board up in the top left for uh, Dynamite Alive, so we'll at least be able to see him, but you won't be able to see Strongest Avenger yet, and even then, Strongest Avenger of 138.5, so he's lost some time to the race leader on that previous lap, as Alan is uh, I mean, the odd little sniff at Lumi, but not really committing for any proper move as of yet. No, Lumi getting a little bit out of shape there, but I would imagine that Alan could go a little bit faster than Lumi if he was to get past. But as you say, he's not going to have any sort of dandier move on that Lamborghini unless he is completely alongside Lumi looking to defend to the inside as they come towards the chicane. As he managed to get that Lamborghini slowed down, he has just about. Now, these aren't exactly overtaking opportunities through the next couple of corners of Lumi decide to defend to the inside. Let's see how they run through the next left two left-handers then before we get towards the final corner. Still tucked up there, Alan, right behind the Lamborghini. He needs to have a fairly decent run onto the pit straight. And now that Lumi's falling back and back, he's not going to have the benefit of a tow from his teammate. So let's see how close Alan can get now as they come down the start-finish line. And I would reckon this is his probably his best chance of popping up to second place. Yep, it just depends on whether he's going to keep that foot in, use that stiff stream and try and commit to the move, or whether he's just going to lift out of it. Di uh, Lumi goes a little bit defensive. There was a slight lift there from Alan, so he looks like he's fairly happy to just sit behind and follow the Lamborghini for the moment. There is Sinterfell. He's just come out of the pit lane from P16. And has rejoined the track as Andrex is into the pit lane, and Strongest Avenger has now got himself... A, uh, a time penalty there. How big is that? Two seconds. So that's obviously going to cost him the lap time that we see there. Otherwise, he would have done a 138.6 on the previous lap, which cost him a little bit of time to the race leader by Fallon and Lumi slipping past uh, slipping past Interfell. Traffic getting out the way there, not really interfering with that battle. It looks like Andrex has come out behind Yogurk by some margin, just waiting for that time to settle itself. There we go, about nine seconds. Yeah, Moose picked up a time penalty now as well, so they're all starting to push the track limits a little bit. Let's see what he's picked up. He has also picked up a two-second penalty as well. Uh, yeah, they're starting to really push the limits now, and they've got to really, they've got to try and keep going. Now, for those, for these drivers, surely the strategy will just be to pit as late as possible. Yep, certainly. I uh, might as well just run as long as they can. As that, well, in fact, at the moment there is quite a nice big uh, gap behind Asturba in seventh place. Uh, Jogak was, he did drop down a little bit, didn't he, before he came into uh, into his pit boxes. Alan was half having a look down the inside of Lumi there, but then wasn't close enough to really go for the move when they came into the braking zone. So again, just slotted in behind. It's just kind of holding Lumi and Allen up a little bit here as As Turbo is into the pit lane from P7. Yeah, that's promoted Mu and Strongest of... Oh no, they were ahead of him already, weren't they? Of course, yep. of course they were. So, Fubar is the only sort of uh, anomaly to put it... Uh, I don't know which other way to put it, but sitting there in the top six at the Oof. moment. As Alan got really out of shape there as he got late on the brakes, and that's just cost him a little bit of time now to Lumi in front. But of course, the power of that Mercedes will bring him back into play as As Turbo is just leaving the pit lane. Let's see where he comes out. Bose Franz is just coming down into turn one. This is going to be quite close, and particularly as Bose Franz's tyres are more up to temperature. But As Turbo manages to keep that position. He's just slotted himself out ahead of the Mercedes. Luke is also into the pit lane. Strongest Avenger just starting now to creep onto the back of Mu. I suppose these two, they don't really want to be fighting each other. They just need to keep digging into Fubar's advantage. There he is just up ahead of them. So do you think Strongest Avenger will just have to sit behind Lamborghini for now? Or is he going to have to get past as soon as possible? He, he can't afford to sit behind. If he... if if there's any chance of him getting himself up onto the podium and or potentially trying to get a race win if something dramatic was to happen to Dynamite Alive, he needs to try and get past Moo as quickly as possible, who actually looks like he's going to be coming into the pit lane. Indeed he is. 
Does he get it slowed down? He does indeed for the line. That looks fine to me, so he's not going to pick up a, uh, a time penalty there. It's just a case of how long is he going to be stationary in his pit box. It's about two and a half, three seconds there, so nothing too major for him in terms of drama coming into the pit lane. It looked like there's a little bit of damage to the front of his car, but again, not too dramatic. So that's Unleash Strongest Avenger and giving him even more free space. He's now got two to two and a half seconds to the back of Fubar up in front. And uh, at the moment, well, Strongest Avenger seems to be running pretty solid pace. He seems to be fairly consistent in the last couple of laps. And Well, he had a two or three laps where he was kind of in the mid-38s. Uh, but the laps before that were also in the mid-37s. So certainly got the pace. Uh, it's just unfortunately hasn't got the track position at the moment. No, and that's always the key point, track position. The, the key thing in motor racing, but as you say now, he has got a little bit of a gap to Fubar. He will probably be hoping that Fubar jumps into the pit lane as soon as possible. He wants to keep as much clear air as he can as Alan continues his assault on Lumi. It looked as if he was trying to break the toe, but the pace of that Mercedes has, has Lumi gone defensive a little bit too early here. Now, Alan, this is his clearest opportunity as he goes around the outside. How late does he dare break? Does Lumi come slithering back down the inside? He's got him around the outside. He's a little bit wide into the corner. Lumi's got a much better run. They rub panels as they now come down towards turn three. But Alan is in the best position here, surely to take second place. Will Lumi fight around the outside? No, he doesn't. He's going to try and swoop back around the outside as Alan goes a little bit wide. And Lumi just about hangs on to second. The clearest opportunity Alan had and couldn't quite make it stick. Yeah, it's him running a little bit deep there in turn one just kind of cost him. Lumi did a very smart thing of uh, trying to keep Alan as far left as he possibly could coming into turn three, making that approach quite tight. Alan did start to come across just as they were coming into the turning zone um, and saw that Lumi was there and kind of halted his progress across to the right to open up the corner whereas Lumi went over to the right to open up the turn and then did a nice switch back carrying the speed and momentum through the, t through the corner so fairly good kind of uh, it's kind of half defensive half offensive move there to re retake and hold on to that second position but uh, we could see another repeat here of uh, Alan trying to go for the move again as they both come through the final turn so what kind of drive does Alan get? Not the best. He's about six to yeah, about six tenths off the back. So uh, not much more he could have done here. Although he is closing slowly, slowly closing. But I don't think he's going to be close enough to go for the lunge coming into the braking zone. And indeed, he opts to slot in behind and remain stationary for the moment. Strongest Avenger continuing with the 137.5s. He's onto the back of Fubar. This is going to be another 37.5. Just 400s off his previous fastest time. We got Sinterfell there just up in front of us. Some lap traffic, but Sinterfell staying very nicely out the way, not interfering. Fubar, what's he going to do? Imagine he's going to take his usual line coming into turn three here. We're just going to hold up Strongest Avenger slightly, but if Strongest gets a reasonable long run coming through here Fubar no he doesn't let him go down the inside Fubar just placing his car a little bit more not really wanting to lose too much time but Strongest could have an overtaken opportunity possibly into the Dunlop chicane yeah he needs a good run now down the hill this doesn't look close enough for me he's gonna have to, it's gonna have to be a very late breaking move if he wants to go up the inside and sensibly he doesn't Fubar just about getting that Renault stopped so Strongest Avenger is going to have to follow him now through this next series of right and left handers towards the start finish straight unless he sends one up the inside into this left hander although he's a little bit too far back for that so this is going to hold him up a little bit as he dances around the outside as we come into the final corner let's see what kind of drive he gets off he's within three or four tenths of that Renault he should be passed fairly quickly and that looks like he's close enough now to get past as they come down towards turn one he needs to dispatch this Renault as quickly as possible as they come now over the line he is very much close Fubar's not going to put up a lot of resistance 
The Strongest Avenger does indeed move himself up into fourth place. So now all that's ahead of him is Alan and the two V10 Lamborghinis. That actually worked out quite nicely for Strongest Avenger. He did a 38-0 on that lap whilst also passing uh, Fubar. And the main man that he's trying to catch at the moment also did a 38-0 as well. So he didn't actually lose any time uh, being kind of slightly held up there by uh, Fubar. The gap is now actually down to 15, just under 16 seconds as Trip is trying to pass the uh, past the SLS of Andrex, who's trying to wall. I thought for a moment, trying to go for a, uh, a switchback, but then I guess lost a little bit of traction and almost pointed his car directly at the Lamborghini. And he's got Moo in close company behind as well. Andrex has got a time penalty to his name as well as Moo. Uh, we saw Moo pick up a two second penalty earlier on. Beauch France is four and a half seconds off the back of this battle as Moo looks down the inside and sends it on Andrex who gives him room there on the inside but the two lines kind of half converged and I think there may have been a brush of wing panels there between the two cars. They're both still going in the same direction without really losing any time to trip so that would have been a slight heart and mouth moment but not, no real harm, no foul there. No, they did just rub slightly as they came through. As you say, both their lines sort of uh, intersected one another. But they, as you say, they are continuing. Let's jump back to Alan, who's still having a go at Lumi. It's a good fight, this. But Alan will be a little bit frustrated that he hasn't made the move stick so far. But in all credit to Lumi, considering that that Lamborghini is obviously lacking a little bit of straight line speed, he's doing a fairly good job here of holding on to second place. Yeah, he's, uh, he just seems to be getting the runs through the corners to kind of hold or extend that gap just a little bit enough for the uh, the start finish straight. And it hasn't been quite, well, he's seen he's had that one real opportunity, but uh, when the two cars were kind of side by side and it was kind of questionable as to who had the, uh, the measure over the other driver, Lumi was a little bit more forceful and kind of put his foot down a little bit more there and, and then kind of conceded. Uh, allowed Lumi to retake that position as Trip was defensive there to Andrex coming through turn three. He's got a slight overlap coming into turn four, but he's on the wrong side of that Lamborghini to uh, really make the move work coming through the double right hander of turns four and five. Although Trip has gone deep there into six, we're now coming to seven. Andrex has got the overlap, he's there on the left hand side. It's going to be the long way round coming through turns eight and nine. This double right handed kink is going to be on the outside as well for the entry to the Dunlop chicane, but it's still side by side. Who's the later of the late breakers? It looks like Trip has just about managed to get the measure over the SLS driver. Holds on to that seventh position for the moment. Moo has got a fantastic seat of this battle, but I doubt he's going to be too best pleased getting held up behind these two. Obviously, that's going to be working very nicely into strongest Avengers hands. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I'm not sure on the pit stops. I don't these guys have these guys pitted already they must have done as trip goes for a late lunge down the inside into the final corner they touch again and trip uh Moo, sorry couldn't quite muscle his way through he's gonna have the slipstream but of course the speed of that mercedes with the slipstream from trip in front as well that that, that seemed a little bit of a desperate move really on uh, Moo's part yeah it was a bit of an opportunity one but he almost made it work but andrex just got a look, well, look like a really really good drive coming off that final turn and as you say with the slipstream pulled away but trip has gone def uh, gone deep once again into the first turn now breaking himself and that is going to be andrex through up into seventh position now moo is going to try and go around the outside coming into turn three this is going to be close going to be tight between the two but it looks like that moo has managed to hold the ground he's going to have the inside line coming through four and five and manages to take that eighth position away from trip punishing him for the mistake that he made going into the first corner and now Moo has firmly got his target sight set on Andrex in front and will be looking to try and get past as soon as he possibly can. I wonder if he's going to go for the move coming into the Dunlop chicane, Matt. Well, with some of the moves he's already attempted so far, I wouldn't put it past him. If the door's open on the inside, he's going to go for it, but Andrex keeps that door shut, does break a little bit. He's gone a little bit wide, but of course that chicane is so tight that you can afford really to outbreak yourself a little bit. And it's not going to give the car behind a lot of space to come to get through as Fubar now has pitted from fifth place. 
So uh, these three should get past him as he is stationary in the pit lane. We'll just follow these guys now into the final corner. Trip oh. going a little bit wide and clipping the curb on the outside. That's going to uh, move, sorry. That's going to give Trip a good run now on him as they come onto the front straight. I suppose the good thing for Moo is that he's got a slipstream from Andrex, but Trip will have a slipstream on the pair of them. These three are pretty much nigh inseparable at the moment. And uh, Trip hasn't quite got the speed there to get onto the back of Moo. There is Fubar actually just coming out from his pit stop. He's just going to be behind this lot. A Trip goes for a move around the outside. Oh, and didn't quite pull it off, but Trip and Moo putting on some incredible wheel-to-wheel -wheel action. Yep, let's uh, cast out the uh, the fishing line as well off the back of Fubar and see if we can hook onto Boge France and reel him in for a five-way fight here as the, the gap is closing up between the uh, between the drivers. So the slight little uh, panel rubbing again coming into first the first corner between Trip and Moo as uh, I'm guessing Trip was desperate to try and retain the track position ahead of Fubar coming out the pit lane. Moo is once again kind of lurking off the back of Andrex, not quite close enough to go for the move this time. Andrex not feeling he needs to go defensive coming into the chicane here. Trip almost looking like he was slightly out breaking himself there. You can see Boge France in, well now the background of the shot and also high times there in 11th position as well. It's also closing up on this battle so it could potentially turn into a, uh, a six way train. Where is Moo? He's, he's trying to line himself up, I think, for a lunge coming into the final corner. I think that's what he needs to do. He needs to kind of upset Andrex slightly off his line coming into the final turn to be there to pick up the slipstream off the final corner. If he can hurt Andrex's run through that turn, it's going to give him a good position to uh, slot in behind, pick up the slipstream and try and make a move coming into the first corner. Otherwise, I think the SLS is just going to pull away or just hold his ground ahead of Moo as Trip is getting the double slipstream. You can see he's closing up. Moo looking to the inside, going for the lunge late on the brakes. Is he going to be able to slow it down and get onto the apex though? He runs a little bit deep, so does Andrex though. But Moo has managed to make the position coming from a few car lengths back. Managed to make it work. Andrex just having to fight the car at the apex and kind of gifting up that... Gifting the position away after he probably could have potentially put up a, uh, a bit of a defence. Yeah, it just needs to stick with uh, Mu now as they come through the long right-hander. Trip looking at the back of Andrex as well. Fubar just maintaining a watching brief just behind. Let's see what kind of a run Trip has now got down to the chicane. Crucial move though for Mu. Let's see if Trip's going to try and go down the inside. Doesn't manage to get the car alongside as Andrex goes really wide and gets very much out of shape and has just put Trip off it. Now Fubar's looking to come through as well. He's round the outside. Trip's going to have the inside for this corner, but now Fubar's going to have the advantage as they go through the left hander. And Andrex's mistake has just gifted Fubar eighth place ahead of Trip, but of course we still have this long pit straight to to come let's see if trip can get back ahead there's plenty going on in this fight and that's allowed Moo just to pull a gap on the on this little group now yeah that's quite unfortunate for trip there and just losing the rear of the car a little bit as he was trying to bring the power back in coming out of turn 10 and into 11 that upset trip was slightly scared him off his line but he's now making the lunge down the inside of fubar he's so closing up onto the back of Andrex, the side by side through that first corner. Two of them just about giving each other enough room and they're side by side as they've just gone through turn two. Down towards turn three, trip on the outside. Fuba holds onto the position, gets his elbows out and stays in that ninth, uh, that eighth position for the moment. Keeping trip in ninth. Also saw Beige France and uh, High Times also battling away in the background, those two very very close as we can see as high times almost goes as well, I think there may have been a slight lag tap there between the two cars didn't look like there was actual physical contact but it looked like that uh, high times may have nudged Boge France through netcoders Fubar's down the inside of Andrex coming into the Dunlop chicane does he get it slowed down at the apex he does and he's now up into P7 nice move very nice move indeed. He got a very good run out of the left hand. The trip's having a go at Andrex as well. Down the inside. This is going to be tight as they get to the apex. 
Oh, and Trip just losing it on the exit there as he made a move. Well, that move from Fubar pretty much came out of nowhere. Yeah, it, <laughs> well, we didn't really see the build up to it, so we don't know whether uh, Andrax just hurt himself a little bit in terms of the traction coming through turn six and seven, but that was a very good move there by Fubar pulling that one off, and High Times has gone around the outside of Beauge France in that final turn, so. Ferrari's now got the measure over the Mercedes, but the Mercedes is now in the slipstream of the Ferrari 2. Relatively equal in terms of straight line speed. There's no real cl clear advantage, but Boge France picking up the toe a little bit, pulls out to present himself down the inside coming into the first turn, but High Time slams that door shut, although he's fighting the car going through the apex. This could be Boge France. His opportunity to try and come back at him, but I don't think he's going to be quite close enough to swoop around the outside there as High Times does cut across the nose and holds on to that 10th position for the moment but that's an interesting fight there between those two as they're trying to catch up with the, uh, the three guys battling away up in front of them. Yeah they both were until they started fighting each other but now that High Times has got past just pulled a small gap they could now start catching these again as it looks like Andrex is just dropping off the back of Fubar so maybe that Mercedes just starting to become a little bit of a handful so we're already on lap 24 there's been so much action that we've actually shot through this race yeah I did want to highlight the uh, the halfway point and in fact I did actually look at the, the lap time I registered there was lap 18 I just did say we are now at the halfway stage of the race but uh, strongest Avenger still in fourth position trying to uh, Close the gap to Dynamite alive. It has extended from just under 16 seconds to 16 and a half now. It was up at 17 seconds, but over the last couple of laps, he's managed to bring that gap back down. I've been keeping an eye on that. The gap between uh, Lumi and Allen looks to still be very, very close, about half a second between those two. So there's, they're still nose to tail. As, uh, looks like Andrax has managed to drop trip slightly and close up towards the back of Fubar. No attempts at overtaking there between those three drivers and then Boge France does present himself in the mirrors of high times but isn't close enough to uh, actually make a move work going through that first turn. So I wonder who is going to be the first of the front runners to uh, blink and try and make a pit stop and here is that battle for P2 between Lumi and Allen. Yeah, as you say, well, it's basically a stop and go for these guys. They won't be taking on any fuel. They probably won't be changing tyres either. So here, let's see now. Alan's got a very good run again, although we've seen this pretty much throughout this race as it looks like he's just set his fastest lap. He's going to look to the outside. He did look like he just about got past Lumi there on the uh, Delta times. But with the outside line, Lumi was always going to have the advantage as they came through oh. the apex. Oh, no. Sorry, I, I thought uh, Strongest had just done a 37.4, which I think was the fastest lap that I would have seen uh, so far on that lap time, but I mistook the, uh, the 37.4 or uh, the 38. Or should let's I say a 38 for a 37? Yeah, let's just have a look at the penalties then. It's still, it's still the same. Lumi's got six, Strongest Avenger has got two. The race leader keeping his nose clean for the moment. And... Uh, Interestingly, yogurt has got the fastest lap of the race. He has. That must have been early on when he had the slipstream of the two Lamborghinis, but he's been consistently lapping in the high 37s, low 138s. So considering that that Jeanette, if he didn't think was going to be that strong, has found some race pace. Yeah, he's sat there in fifth position at the moment. Seems to be quite lonely. He's got uh, quite a big gap to Strongest Avenger in front. Uh, but obviously all the drivers in front of Yogok is still yet to pit. Uh, Mu behind has made his mandatory pit stop, but he's 14 seconds behind. So, uh, yeah, Yogok in very lonely, clear air at the moment. As, uh, Trip is trying to find a way past Andrex, looking to the outside through both the right-hander and also the left-hander that we uh, just saw them go through. And you can see Fubar putting a fairly big gap now to uh, these two drivers and starting to disappear off into the distance. I was just about to highlight as Andrex goes, oh, they touch, they touch Andrex again, losing the car through the chicane. They make slight contact and actually he lets Trip back through. 
I was just about to say the FUBAR will have been very happy seeing those two fighting. And in fact, it's becoming a four-way battle now as High Times has joined them. And then the background is Boj Franz as well. This is dreamland for FUBAR at the moment. And he is, well, at the moment, penalty free. Yep, and just recognising they, they made a fairly substantial mistake there and uh, kind of basically parked his car right in front of the trip with nowhere to go, so uh, let him go on through. Although Andrex has got the slipstream, so he's going to be back past Trip in next to no time, which I'm sure Trip is uh, is going to be very happy about. He does slot in behind to try and pick up a little bit of slipstream and then tries to go for the move around the outside. Will he actually be able to pull it off? He's trying to hold it there for the moment as High Times cashes in on this as well. It's 3Y coming through turn 2 on the run down towards turn 3. It looks like that Trip is... Uh, dropped out and dropped in behind down into 10th position Andrex just about managing to hold onto the 8th place and High Times has now got himself up into ninth. a shuffle of positions there from the three drivers well just showing the pace that straight line speed of that Mercedes and the Ferrari holding its own as well down the straight and High Times profiting very nicely with that uh, fight just in front Fubar very happy with this as Boge Franz now looks just presenting his nose as Trip. Oh, very nearly. And again, Andrex losing the back end of that Mercedes coming into the chicane. Really starting to struggle now as High Times looks to the inside. That's going to be a very brave move if he makes it through there. They're side by side, just slots in behind. Doesn't want to open the door to Trip, mind you, who's looking down the inside. Well, that may cost Trip now because he just clipped the curb. Boge Franz in on this battle as well well i don't know who to put my money on here because with the straight line speed of that mercedes whoever gets past andrex early on he's going to have them again down the pit straight yeah, this is going to be very close Boge france is a little bit closer i probably would have put my money on him with the triple slipstream but uh, at the moment it's trip he's got the double though he's pulled out he's there lurking just to drive his right off the ferrari at the moment as andrex moves across one way then the other, he could find himself free wide here as High Times is trying to pop his nose in down the middle. It hasn't quite worked out for him, Andrex still holds the head of the troll. Oh, dearie me, Trip, they're getting really aggressive and uh, coming across on High Times, shoving him over to the left-hand side of the circuit. Not entirely sure what that was about, whether Trip just, uh, I don't know, did he get scared running to the side of the track, possibly looking elsewhere for a moment or was that an intentional move don't don't really know i can't really tell at uh, at this stage but high times is now back down into uh into 10th place and Boge france is sat there right at the back of the four car train waiting for any mistake and alan is uh still trying to find a way past Louis. this battle's been going on pretty much all race long yeah i th i'm wondering whether um trip was just a little bit annoyed that high times just came across on him slightly down the main straight as they were going towards turn one but uh, perhaps he was just looking at other parts of the track but it did seem a fairly aggressive swerve across the track so we'll have to wait and see what comes of that after the race but this battle well alan is either going to have to really send one somewhere or he's going to have to get a much better drive off the final corner because of course down the pit straight we've seen him trying to put some moves on Lumi, but that Lamborghini just seems to have a decent amount of traction out of that final corner just to give him the breathing space that he needs to put up a defense into turn one. Yeah. Just coming through the last few sequence, well, few, last few corners. Gap is just under half a second. So if Alan wants to be close enough to try and make that move into the first corner, as you've been saying, and if you close that gap and get a good run off that last turn that we've just been through there. This doesn't look like too bad of a run. He's starting to close up now in the slipstream. He just needs to stay in the slipstream for as long as possible to really enhance the slingshot. He pulled out a little bit earlier there than I would have. He's gone to the racing line fairly early. So he's up alongside Lumi as the side-by-side -side coming into this first turn. Alan trying to, I thought, maybe go for a switch back there, but decided to excuse me, try and hold it around the outside for the moment. Lumi holds on to that second position, also in that shot that we just saw of the two drivers going down that start-finish straight from that first corner, was Strongest Avenger in the background. 
10 seconds, or well, about 9 seconds, separates Strongest Avenger from P3 at the moment. And of course, of course a car to pass as well. But uh, yeah, the top four still yet to make their mandatory pit stop. And they've got the best part of uh, six to seven laps remaining to do so. A slow lap from Strongest Avengers. He picked up another penalty. He has. He's now got a four second penalty. So the odds are stacking up against Strongest Avenger now as we head towards the final stages of this race. And of course, the championship as well. And Alan trying as hard as he might to get past Lumi. Again, the gap just remaining at about half a second. Looks a little bit ragged through those final couple of corners. This is probably the biggest gap that Lumi's had for quite some time. Alan will start to reel him in as they get closer to turn one. But he's made that Lamborghini incredibly wide this evening and he's doing a very good job of it as he again pulls to the inside just to set himself up for the defence. Let's see what kind of a run Alan has now. Will he break a little bit earlier this time and just try and slingshot out of turn one? Lumi may just park the Lamborghini on the apex and he does just to hold that Mercedes back. So this is really good defensive driving here by, uh, by Lumi. Yeah, I don't think Alan's really making too much effort to try and get past unless he's got himself a, a very sure chance of uh, trying to make the move. Otherwise, he seems pretty happy at the moment just to sit there in that third position. Uh, I no, he wasn't having a slight look there. I was going to say it, the the Alrex Racing drivers of uh, Alan and Andrex at the moment 62 and a half points off the back of uh, it's a vacuum, it's a lawn mower. No, it's a Janetta of uh, Yogurk and Speedy Go. Speedy goes down in 12th position, and uh, Yogurk's obviously up in fifth, but it could potentially gain a position or two with drivers in front of him pitting. Uh, Alan obviously being in P3 and Andrex in P9. So they're going to come away with a bigger haul of points at the moment, but I don't think it is going to be big enough in order to uh, take that position. What I might actually do is do a l quick little bit of calculating whilst uh, you carry on talking. With, no worries, uh, what's I'm going just going to say that High Times has actually moved himself up into 8th place now. He's got ahead of this train and Trip has actually fallen a long way behind Bosch, Franz and Andrex. So that four-car scrap we were having for eighth place has just spread itself a little bit now. And if High Times can put the lap times in, he was half a second faster than Fubar on that previous lap. Don't count out the Ferrari to maybe fight his way up into seventh place as well. I'm just going to check the penalties, actually, because I noticed Lumi had a slow <clears throat> one that time around. Lumi's got a nine-second penalty now. Whoa. So, and Alan hasn't got a penalty at the moment, so that, <laughs> well, we thought Alan wouldn't try and make a move unless he absolutely have to. He absolutely doesn't have to at this stage. No, he's, uh, he's very much well within that nine seconds. I've also quickly done a bit of mathematics using the, uh, the calculator, and as things stand at the moment, the two Janetta drivers will come out and hold that second position ahead of the two SLS drivers, despite the SLS guys outscoring uh, the Janetta drivers in this round as uh, well even if the two Janetta drivers didn't finish at all in this race the two SLS drivers wouldn't have enough points to leapfrog them get at the moment on to score 51 points as things stand well actually no scratch that sorry 51 plus uh, 57 points in this round as uh, Allen is on course to take P2 if he stays within that nine seconds of Lumi in front and uh, Andrex was to remain where he is in P9. Uh, yeah, they'll score 57 points in total, but it's a 62.5 uh, point gap between themselves and the two Ginettas. Just looking now, strongest Avengers pace has dropped now into the into the low to mid one thirty eight. He's not closing on the leaders in front. He's some 24 seconds now off the lead, and we've only got more well, four laps, four laps to go. It's looking good for Dynamite Alive to take the Drivers' Championship as Bosch Franz now lines up. Andrex down into the chicane and Strongest Avenger, as I say, that has jumped into the pit lane. So the first driver of the top four to come in. Has Yogurt pitted yet? Yes, yeah, he did, uh, did so earlier in the race. Well, here he comes then. He's going to get ahead of Strongest Avenger here. 
Yeah, he was, he was certainly ahead on track, and I think Jorgic's pace being pretty consistent, high 37s, low 38s, it's kind of been in and around uh, what Strongest Avenger was doing anyway. So uh, I was expecting Strongest to come out behind, and in fact, Moo has actually uh, come out ahead of Strongest Avenger as well. I think those last couple of laps, Strongest Avenger has uh, really hurt him a little bit. I think it, they've really taken the the fire out of his belly. I think he um, when he picked up a penalty, that uh, it cost him a fair amount of time. It's, it's usually coming out off the exit of uh, turn three there, just running out a little bit wide is where they uh, typically pick up penalties around this circuit. Um, and yeah, it's pretty difficult to clear the penalty going through that long left-hander there so no doubt he probably would have tried to have cleared the penalty but did so unsuccessfully and uh, that's meant that unfortunately for strongest Avenger he's is basically he's just completely taken any chance of him getting to where he would have wanted to have been and uh, is kind of just settled for the position that he's in at the moment the only Saving grace that uh, could possibly come Strongest Avengers way is if Dynamite Alive was to either disconnect or to actually forget to serve his mandatory pit stop. He's got uh, well, he's got two more opportunities to pass the pit lane and actually go in to serve that mandatory pit stop. And if he forgets to do that, then well, I think I think the penalty is disqualification. You would have thought so, wouldn't you? Considering that they have to make their stop, but he's running very nicely at the moment just under 37.6 as well so the pace has been there all the way through this race Allen's just picked up a penalty it's only two seconds that's not gonna hinder him at all it's in his battle for second place just keeping an eye on some of the other cars behind as well as Bosch Franz and Andrex continue their fight and they're just starting to creep onto the back of high times now High Times no longer catching FUBAR either. So we may still end up with a three-way fight for eighth place. Although there's only a few laps left for these guys to do it. But yeah, let's just keep an eye on the race leaders. Because as you say, they haven't come into the pit lane yet. As Dynamite Alive starts lap 35. So he's only got one more opportunity to take it as Lumi does in deep pit. As does Alan as well. Interesting. So battle of the, uh, the two pit crews. And Dynamite Alive has only got one opportunity to uh, serve his mandatory pit stop. Who's going to come out ahead of who? It looks like that it was pretty equal in terms of stationary time. So Lumi retains his position ahead of Alan. Question is now, how close is Yoga going to be? The white dot that is just coming towards the pit lane. There he is, in fact. So this is a better way round to look at it. Yoga obviously coming towards the start finish line. The two white dots are going to be Lumi and Alan coming out of the pit lane. There they are on the right hand side. Oh, Yoga's going to have Alan. He's not going to be close enough to get Lumi as of yet, but he's going to be at racing speed coming into this uh, this first corner. Well, uh, Yoga doesn't have a penalty at all, so Yoga's on to take. P2, if you can hold close enough here to uh, the back of Lumi. Well, that's incredible, considering he had that mistake, didn't he, that which dropped him down to did, fifth yeah. early on. This has been an incredible drive by Yogurk so far, and he still has, and he probably will finish second, but of course he's got that uh, Mercedes behind. But as you say, he has, he is penalty free so far. If he can just tag into the slipstream of Lumi now, he is on for an incredible result to finish his season. Yep, uh, with only two laps to go as well. I think that shouldn't be a too difficult task because Dynamite Live is into the pit stop, so he's not going to be disqualified from this session unless he does something actually stupid and ridiculous like speeds in the pit lane by a, an excessive amount. But he stops in his pit box. The guys go to pretend to service the car and then he drives away in, uh, in reasonable time, so he should quite comfortably hold the lead with that one as he trundles towards pit exit Alan fairly close to the back of Jorgurk I wonder if Alan's going to go for the move coming into turn one might have the mm, tiniest of double slipstreams here but it's going to be really really close and minor between the two he's suddenly starting to close up on the Ginetta now you can see that quite visibly 
So you're going to look to the inside as they come in towards the breaking zone. Yorga not going defensive and Alan holds station behind for the moment and follows him on through. I think Alan just knows that if he got past Yorga, he's just going to lose the position anyway because of the, the time penalty. So he might as well just sit behind and hope that uh, Yorga stays well within Lumi in front so that uh, Alan takes that final podium spot anyway with the uh, the difference in time penalties between him and a Lamborghini driver. Yeah, we are on to the final lap and you are looking at the man who looks set to take the driver's championship. It's been an incredible fight between him and Strongest Avenger throughout this season. But it looks as if in the end, the Lamborghini is going to come out the victor. He's only got another two corners plus the long straight to go but dynamite alive he and strongest avenger had three race wins apiece coming into this final race of the season and dynamite alive with his fourth victory of this campaign is going to be crowned season 16 aor gt3 champion as he comes across the line to win at fuji absolutely stellar performance by our season 16 champion as he goes and claims that now with a flash of the lights and a weave across the line. Audi's in the background there also celebrating as Lumi comes ahead of uh, of Yogurt and also Alan. Alan just pips Yogurt to the line but uh, is going to drop behind because of the time penalty so Yogurt takes that P2. Alan will take that final step of the podium with Lumi's nine second penalty that he had. Mu has now come across the line. Here is our other title com uh, contender, Strongest Avenger, he will take second place in the championship. What potentially could have been for him if there wasn't the drama at the start of the race. I do have to feel uh, sorry for Strongest Avenger there. as uh, seemed very much like another driver's fault and not necessarily his own. And that was kind of robbed from his own hands. The, uh, the two V10 gang drivers doing some, uh, some donuts there in celebration. Obviously, they've taken the team championship as well. They've uh, well and truly, truly claimed that and did so a couple of races ago ahead of the uh, the two Janettas. My, oh, my, what a season it's been. Unbelievable. And we had drama to the end, didn't we, with uh, the start line incidents. Dynamite Alive drove an absolutely stellar race to take victory as they all now... It's the end of the season. The donut shop is open and even the back markers are getting involved as well. It's been an incredible season. Yep, we're just waiting for our uh, lead coordinator, Stephen Curry, to come across the line who does so. He unfortunately doesn't get to celebrate. But here it is then, your final confirmation of the results. Dynamite Live coming away with the race win and also the Drivers' Championship. Yogok picking up P2 as he was penalty 3. Alan had a 4 second penalty in the end. Lumi had a 12 second penalty in the end. So Alan picks up the final podium spot with Lumi in 4th. Mu came home in 5th position in the end with Strongest Avenger in 6th place. Fubar in 7th high times in 8th place. Andrex in ninth. Trip claims that final top 10 position. Bosch Franz in the other. Mercedes comes home 11th ahead of Ass Turbo. Speedy Go 13th, just ahead of WMDR Martin. Stefan Carey in 15th, just ahead of the Kinky One. Kirinik 17th. Cameron 18th. Sinderfell finishing his season in the points in 19th. Nidalap 20th. And Luke running out our final runners. Yep. So for one last time, we shall invite the drivers to uh, come in for an interview. At the moment, no one has uh, jumped for the ready to interview room. Actually, no, a couple of drivers are doing that now. So bear with me one second here whilst I just uh, quickly sort and rearrange things in a way that uh, would be appropriate to reference and get people in. Let's get our first driver, our first driver into the commentary box. Our season 16 champion, Dynamite Alive. Congratulations to you, sir. How are you feeling in this moment? Oh my God, the pressure is gone now. Amazing. Uh, really, really nice. Uh, 
the race was uh, i mean the start was really unexpected that uh, it's gonna go this way uh but well it played my way uh but uh yeah i had to stay out of trouble stay out of uh, any penalties or anything so i wasn't pushing really hard i was yeah just enjoying clean air in front and hanging on what was uh what was going through your mind when you saw the two cars in front collect each other in turn one and the uh the clack just the track just clear for you to take the race lead from pretty much the get-go yeah it was just i went on the brakes and he Mo just went past me. I, I knew he, he's not gonna make it, and I was like, wow. And then he hit Avenger, and I, I get past them, and I thought, wow, this is my chance now. I can't, uh, I can lose it now. So I was really cautious uh, after that. So I don't know if they get any damage, but uh, they were they were fast. Well, you've had a very strong season and to cap it off with a race win as well it, it couldn't have gone more perfectly for you how would you just sum up this season for you now yeah it was pretty decent with nice pace uh it was some ups and downs um sometimes but uh really good competition between some guys um uh, really good racing for i think uh, every could enjoy it like the guys on from in front, in the middle, and even in the back. So uh, that was really, really nice. And the uh, difference between races was uh, really, really good. Uh, like different, different type of races. Like uh, we had different weather, uh, reversing starting grid, and uh, other things that makes races interesting. That was re- really fun. Good stuff. Would you consider coming back for a uh, a future championship if we do another season 17? I, I believe there's talk, potential talks of uh, a future season. Not entirely sure what it's going to be as of yet. I haven't actually seen anything confirmed, but would you make a, another return here at AOR? Of course I will think about this, but uh, we'll see how things go and um, how I'm how I am doing at this time when we starting or you guys starting next season. So uh, hopefully, but we'll see. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for coming in and chatting with us here in the, uh, in the final race of the season. Obviously, congratulations to yourself. You are our season 16 champion and uh, yeah, you get to hold your head up high and tell all your friends and family about it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, thank you for congratulations. But I also need to thank you, all of you guys. You both for awesome commentating and streaming for us and other dri- other drivers for making this uh, really competitive. And also I want to thank everybody that uh, sits behind this Apex organization that makes this happen, uh, makes possible to, to guys join and race. This is really, really nice. Thank you. You're most welcome, man. Well, we'll let you head off and enjoy the rest of your evening and uh, have a little bit of a celebration and uh, look forward to hopefully seeing you again in a future season. Yeah, thank you, man. Cheers. Cheers, Dynamite. Okay. Congratulations, mate. Bye. Speaking of thank yous, let's get our league coordinator in. Obviously, Stefan Curry, you are the man behind... The curtain who uh, helped to make this well-oiled machine here at AOR run, as well as a number of other people across the various platforms and different tiers. But uh, yeah, just kind of wanted to follow on from what Dynamite Alive was saying in terms of uh, thank you for everyone for you know getting the AOR leagues up and running, and of course you are a big man involved with that. So we want to <laughs> echo that thank you get you in and uh yeah pass that on to you so thank you and yeah tell us a little bit about your race this evening we didn't see too much from you it was quite quiet wow first of all thank you as well um as i've said before I've, i'm used to watching um the streams or the replays of you guys fantastic job 
Yeah, and also behind the curtains. It's been a hell of a job this season for several reasons, but it's been so much fun again. Um, every single person in this tier or in our community basically is just wonderful to race against or to talk with. Lots of fun. And I think this race was... It was okay for me. Um, didn't have mu didn't have much practice. I think I started half an hour before the race or so. But yeah, I got unfortunately I got caught up in a spin in the early laps, lap three or four or so. Had to pit for damage, but I only lost ten, twelve, fifteen seconds or so. And then it was a fun race. Um, Martin chased me a bit, and I put um, one personal best after another, and then he got past, and he was off by 20 seconds after a few laps oh. but it was yeah really fun race um i hope there's not too much sadness or fury involved because of that uh, lap one incident or turn one incident rather but yeah other than that great race great ending to a season i'm happy good stuff can we uh potentially get some insider info as to whether there's a potential season 17 in the works, or are you possibly thinking of uh, other <clears throat> other leagues? What's what's going on behind the curtain? Well, um, probably can't reveal too much, but just a little bit of something. Um, to be honest, yeah. Well, <laughs> of <laughs> course. Um, let's say it this way: we want to keep this going on for another season, of course. But the, um, we have to see if we can get the numbers up. Um, was quite close this season, but it worked. Um, if we fast forward to another to another possible season, then it might get tricky if there's only 30, 35 signups or so. Um, having a huge gap of speed in one tier and so on. But yeah, I can't sp uh, I can't speak on on the staff's behalf, but personally, I would go for a perfect ending for Project Cast Two in AOR. And make it a, a season to remember. Like include the best tracks only. Let's do Norch Life. Or let's do I don't know, two point four hours at Le Mans or something like this. Um, all the best tracks, crazy settings. Maybe even some 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 fun stuff. You know, we never did. I don't know, no idea. But yeah, personally, I hope we get something running. Sounds like an interesting idea. Well, thank you, Stefan. Uh, Matt, did you have anything real quick? I just wanted to ask Stefan about his season altogether. Of course, you had that victory at Zolda. Surely that's the biggest <laughs> highlight for you. Um, so how would you feel this season's gone for you? Um, uh, it's been great, actually. Um, I was thinking maybe I could fight for P12 in the end, maybe P10 with a bit of luck. But I don't think that worked out quite well. But nonetheless, yeah, Zolda was... I mean, what the, what the fuck? Oh, sorry. <laughs> but... I have no idea how that worked out, and yeah, that was absolutely, I don't know. Um, of course, it was, it, um, it was the only race of the season I didn't stream, so I have no proof of how fucking happy I was. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was amazing. The season went on really good. It was stressful as heck, because I've got a set of cars are racing besides uh, my new job. I've got evening classes now. Not a lot of time, but 100% worth it. Excellent. Well, your Wednesday evenings have now become free <laughs> for a while. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, enjoy, enjoy the uh, enjoy the time off. Thank you once again for helping organize everything and making the uh, AOR League run for yet yeah, another season. And thanks for taking part in the races as well and uh, coming to talk to us a number of times throughout the season. Yeah, thanks for having us. Um, thanks for your absolutely great job at commentating and interviewing. So fucking professional. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, man. Um, it's absolutely lovely, yeah. Thank you as well, mate. All right, cheers, Stefan. I'll see you later. Cheers, mate. Ciao for now. Okay, let's get another driver in. A natural driver this time. Well, Stefan Curry was a natural driver, but Lumi. Hello. Hello, fourth position in the end. Yeah. Tell us... How you're feeling after that race? Obviously, could have potentially been a podium, but 12 seconds worth of penalties, unfortunately, uh, yeah, cost you. There. I mean, 
it, it was good. It was it was good fun. I I I didn't really do much the whole race. I just held up Alan because um, I thought I want to just give Dynamite a bit of a gap for the the, the guaranteed championship. I, I'm not sure what happened in turn one, but I saw two cars and one of them was Avenger just fly off, and then I was like, okay, right, he's got it in the bag now, uh, Dynamite. So yeah, I, I wasn't really bothered about finishing fourth. I, I finished second, but obviously had some track limit penalties and because I'm not really in it for the championship anymore. I just, I wasn't really fussed about that. It was good fun. Yeah, but, uh, you... yeah, you're behind Jorgek, so you, yeah, you would have retained that fifth position in the, uh, in the drivers' championship. Any standout races uh, that you particularly enjoyed throughout the season? Uh, well, us, I don't know. The first one is probably Kota because it was just a domination by the the, the Lamborghini, you know, the, the V10 gang. But um. Yeah, I, a few of them were quite bad, but still at the same time, really good fun because I had to make up loads of positions and that was good. Yeah. It's been a long season, but you and Dynamite Alive have certainly struck up a partnership and have and dominated the team championship as well. So if you were to sum up your season in one word, what would it be? <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, it, it was interesting because... I, I I don't want to make any excuses, but I had I had like some uh, some force feedback problems when we went to Red Bull Ring, and then I sort of the, the next two races were not good for me, but yeah, that, that's my that's my excuse there. But it was good fun. It was definitely an interesting season. Spa would be a good one, I think. Um. Oh yeah, because I, I yeah because <laughs> you're on this side. <laughs> I, I forgot. I think my brain blocked that out. That's like right. We're here to remind you. Pence piece on its side. Oh god, yeah, that was that was crazy. Yeah. I mean, when it happened, I just I wasn't even upset. I just started laughing because it was so crazy. <laughs> oh, brilliant stuff. Well, would you return for another season if we did another one, even if uh, it was potentially I mean, another cars? Think, yeah, definitely. Excellent stuff. Well. We look forward to seeing you again in another season if we do do another one. It's still up in the air and un unsure at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Guys behind the curtain are trying to work some things and make some decisions as to what's going to happen. But uh, yeah, congratulations on uh, fourth place tonight and uh, fifth position in the championship and obviously first position in the team championship. Thank you. For, and thanks to you two for some really good commentary. Thank you very much. See ya. You guys are welcome. See you later, Lumi. Right, let's let's get another driver in real quick. Yogurk. Hello. P two in the end for you. Uh you were running in P two for a while and then you made a mistake and dropped down to about fifth, sixth position, and then you well, you managed to get P two in the end because of time penalty for Lumi, but tell us how your race went. Well at the first like the first laps I was pretty excited you know there was that incident that I went from P7 to P2 basically in one corner which is pretty impressive and then I was I saw that I had pace in the opening laps and I was actually catching Dynamite Alive and I was sitting behind him all the time but yeah then I made that mistake because I was running a pretty low downforce setup to compensate for the big straight where I would probably lose like a second if someone like Strongest Avenger was sitting behind me in my slipstream but yeah, because of that, I just lost the rear and I started drifting and I barely kept it together. Thankfully, I didn't spin it completely, but I did lose three seconds, which I was kicking myself for. But yeah, in the end, my strategy in the first place was not to sit in the slipstream for the whole race, but pit early to get a great pit stop. And I did. I got a one second flat pit stop and uh, overtaking the couple of guys who got in front of me was pretty easy. Because uh, some of them uh, went pretty easy on me because I, they knew I was clearly faster. And honestly, overtaking in Fuji is not so hard either. I already tested that yesterday in the Tuesday t uh, social race. And yeah, I easily got through the field and many of the people pitted in front of me as well at the mid middle of the race, basically. And yeah, then I just started pushing. And yeah, it's unfortunate for Moo and strongest avenger that they came together but you know that's just 
racing, sometimes stuff happens and I'll gladly take those free two spots that I got. You've played into your hands nicely at the start and uh, we've been talking all season of how well you've managed to get that Janetta into some of the great results that you have done. If we were to have another season, would you consider sticking with it or move to a different car? <laughs> Honestly, I, I think I'll move to a different car because it's definitely fun to race around, but I want to be more on the podiums. Of course, this one was a pretty surprise podium from P7 to P2, which is probably my best, if not one, like one of the best races I've had. And But yeah, I think I might take something a bit faster next time if there is a next season, because yeah, as I said, I want to challenge for the championship next time. Excellent. Well, I'm guessing you'll be putting yourself through a uh, fairly rigorous training pr uh, program then between the two seasons, trying to figure out what car to go with next and obviously making sure you're nice and sharp for that next season. Um, is there, well, if we were to do a next season, uh, another season, what sort of tracks would you like to see on the calendar? Honestly, I think something like Watkins Glen would be pretty nice. Um, maybe, on, honestly, I don't know much, but I would say just tracks that we haven't driven that often to spice it up a little bit. But yeah, honestly, I I like this season's calendar quite a lot. So hopefully we can repeat that in the next season if it happens. Good stuff. Watkins Glen, Watkins Glen is a good shout. I definitely agree with you there. Well... Thank you very much for coming to talk to us tonight, Yoga. Congratulations on P2 in the end, and obviously congratulations on your season as well. You retained fourth position. Uh, I don't think you jumped ahead of Mu. I don't think you outscored him by enough points in order to do that, but still some very solid performances by yourself, considering the car that you uh, that you had. So, yeah, we look forward to seeing what you pick uh, next season and uh, how well you do. Yeah, thank you for commenting this season. It was very, very nice. I liked the streams and I liked everyone I raced with this season. So hopefully not all of them leave because there's some great racers here and hopefully we can have a next season that's going to be just as great as this one. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Yogok. You take care of yourself, dude, and uh, shall see you again soon. Oh, I'm moving Yogok around when he's jumped out the thing. One last driver coming into the commentary box. The man who always likes to talk, Andrex, welcome for one last time, one last hoorah. Let's one hear your story up. of the race. Yeah, it was a bit wild. The car was not behaving very well. I um, noticed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a bit slippery. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it was weird because I did a practice race on Monday and it felt good. Uh, Tuesday night's uh, practice run felt bad and did another practice after that. felt good. And tonight felt bad so I, I think it just depends on the live track conditions a bit to an extent but um my tire pressures are a bit high as well to start with um they dropped off and in the last five laps they were all right but yeah it, it didn't really go to plan but i think it's probably a, a pretty fair representation of my season this season um yeah it, 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 was, it was just a fun season it was it was never a car to take for for being super competitive I think uh, I think I just need to be in that Audi <laughs> um, and, and stop being uh, silly and taking daft cars but yeah I mean, it, it was a, it was a good good race uh, I had plenty of battles uh, there's people all over me um, so it was hard work but uh, good fun uh, pretty much yeah for the same for the rest of the season as well it's, it's I, I enjoyed it and um, enjoyed sharing the track with these guys uh, it's kind of pleasure to race with those guys. Yeah, it's good fun. Good stuff. Tell us about the uh, that battle that you had between yourself, as both France High Times, uh, Trip, Fubar was involved in there. Pretty sure there's one other driver as well. At some point, yeah, probably of an Andrex train a bit um, at times. Um, I, I, it was just a case of whoever was in the front of a train. Um, ended up getting caught by everyone else so whoever it was didn't wasn't able to pull away so there's a lot of changing of positions but um the, the car was so bad on the brakes tonight they were just flying past me there's no point in defending 
Um, there's some scary times when they seem to go past so quick and outbreak themselves a little bit to try and get past and end up kind of block passing a little bit. But I can't really blame them because I'm so early on the breaks. But um, yeah, it was just it was good battling. It was nice and clean, fair, respectable racing. So um, yeah, no complaints. Just bad breaks, I guess. And my my bad breaks not so much just about the car because Alan could obviously uh, get more a lot more out of it than I could so I can't really blame blame the tool that much it's uh, I know it's my limitation more than the car so but uh, I, I think if I, I could learn how to break I could probably relatively quick but um, it's always been my biggest uh, failure so I've uh, I've learned to live with it really and not defend too much so that people don't go into the back of me it works. Matt, did you have anything you wanted to ask, Andrews? I just wanted to see how, you know, you were champion last season and we've got a very deserving champion in Dynamite Alive this season. But how's your season gone? How would you rate it? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a pleasure to, to hand the crown over uh, to Dynamite. He's done a, an awesome season. Uh, great, great racer, great speed, uh, great driving. Um, deserves it. Uh, there's no real question about it. Uh, strongest was right up there as well. Um, so, uh, personally, I've got a, a, a strong love for the Aston Martin, and I'd, and I'd have loved to have seen that take the championship. But uh, obviously, it wasn't in the stars this season. Um, no, it's a shame. But uh, no, I can't. You can't take anything away from Dynamite. He's, he's done a, a stellar job, um, and, and it was nice to see some slightly off the wall car choices this season as well the Aston and Genetas and SLSs and stuff like that it wasn't just full of uh, AMGs and Lambos so it's always nice to see but yeah I, I, I mean again this season was was just for fun uh, just to kind of have battles with people on track um, and just enjoy the racing no pressure see where I come uh, and I think I managed to do top 10s on every race so I'm I'm happy with that, you know. I could have done better in a better car, I'm sure, but I, I don't mind. I'm not I'm not out to win. I'm not out to get the best I possibly can. I'm just just there to have the fun, um, which was uh, certainly mission objective uh, completed. So, yeah, good stuff. Oh, well, congratulations, Andrex. Uh, also, we just worked out that you've uh, you finished seventh in the championship as well. You're yeah. one point five seconds behind Speedy and outscored him this time round. So, you retake seventh. You get. P3 in the team championship, not quite outscoring the Gillettes enough tonight, but uh, yeah, thanks very much, man, uh, for racing this season, and well done, good job. Cheers. <laughs> uh, thanks for running the uh, commentary all season. It's uh, it's an awesome job. It's a pleasure to watch it back every every night. So uh, yeah, it's great stuff. Thank you. Thanks very much, man. Thank I'll you. Let you. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and hopefully see you back in a future season. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Good night. Right. Cheers, bye. Oh, well, that's done and dusted. Plenty of... Well, before we go, Yorkie, how would you sum this whole season up? Oh, uh... Just to put you on the spot in our last broadcast. Yeah, very much so. Uh, absolute wild roller coaster. We've had how many different race winners? One, two, three, four, six different race winners throughout the season. We've had a number of people who jumped onto the podium unexpectedly throughout the race. It's been quite the roller coaster. It's been a very strong calendar in terms of the the track choice. I like a lot of the circuits that uh, we've raced here. I think the tracks that we did the, um, the double headers on um, worked very, very well. Obviously, I wasn't there for Zolder, uh, but I watched it back and that was a very very entertaining race there um it's just yeah it's been enjoyable it was great to see it come down to the wire i do feel like strongest avenger was robbed of his opportunity to really fight for the championship there in the end so i feel quite sorry um obviously commiserations to him but dynamite alive is a very fitting champion and it's uh yeah it's great to see someone rise to the occasion and uh and take it when it mattered so yeah i just i've enjoyed this this season thoroughly um and you've also been a big part of that enjoyment as well mashup matt i very much appreciate you coming to join me in the commentary box uh with 
started off things very well at the beginning of the season and we just got stronger and stronger as a commentary pair throughout the season and it's it's been an absolute pleasure so i do also want to say a massive great big congratulations and thank you as well if your commentary efforts uh for each round and each race that we've had thank you yorkie yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure as you say we started off in August, it's been an enthralling championship. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to do this as well. Strongest Avenger started the season off particularly well. Dynamite Alive came on really, really strongly in the second half and a fitting way to win a race, to win the championship as well. It's been an incredible field of drivers this season and hopefully we'll get to see them on track together again at some point because there's some real talent amongst this group. Yeah, definitely. It'd be great to do another season, but obviously that's all in the coordinator's hands. Once again, we must say a massive shout out and a thank you to all those who work behind the scenes to uh, keep AOR alive and running. Obviously, 16 seasons throughout Project Cars. No, I do not want to do a restart. Um, so <laughs> we'll clear that and... Uh, figure out another time for that one. I apologise for everyone in the stream. But yeah, a big thank you to everyone behind the scenes at AOR. They keep the machine running. As you say, 16 seasons across Project Cars 1 and Project Cars 2. Be yet to see whether there's a 17th season. Hopefully there is, because the drivers enjoy racing here. I want to say a big thank you, obviously to you again, Matt, for joining me in the commentary box. Also want to say a massive thank you to King Kodiak as well for filling in uh, for myself at the uh, the race at Zoldo. He did an absolutely phenomenal job, as he always does in the commentary box there for that one. And of course, one last thank you to everyone who's come and joined us in the live streams, in the live chat, have uh, basically talked to us. We haven't really been able to talk to you guys back too much as we, we do kind of focus more on the actual racing rather than kind of talking with the fans but nonetheless hope that the uh, the season has been thoroughly entertaining for you all and the last people that we need to thank is of course all the drivers they've done an absolutely stellar job of providing the entertainment throughout this season down in the description below are links to myself and Matt's Twitter pages. There's also a link to my YouTube as well. It'd be very much appreciated if you followed us there. Matt, do you have are you willing to share your YouTube channel as of yet? Yeah, you can uh, find me. It's youtube.com forward slash mashup Matt. I am hoping to start uploading again. Uh, I also stream as well on Twitch under the same username as well. So yeah, feel free to follow me on there. I will also be streaming some of uh, my AOR uh, ventures as well over the next year or so. Brilliant stuff. So, yeah, make sure you go follow us. Hit the subscribe buttons. Hit the subscribe button on the AOR YouTube channel. If you hear the bell notifications as well, you want to be notified each time that either myself, Matt, or AOR end up going live with a live stream. And, of course, that means that you won't miss out on a Season 17 if we go ahead and do that. So, yes, from us, one last time. It is going to be good night. Look after yourselves. Hope to see you back again soon. But in the meantime, have fun, stay safe, and take care. <laughs>